Hi, Andrew Bell here with you for my fortnightly update. Got a bit to cover with you. As I do from time to time, I love to be able to show you some of the landmark homes and some of the hidden gems that come up for sale from time to time here on the Gold Coast. Today, I'm giving you the opportunity to be the first of you, a property owned by one of our great Olympians, Andrew Bailden. So here we are at 13 to 15 Burnside Court, Ashmore, where you find us situated on 5,287 square metres of land. It's an iconic Georgian inspired residence with a massive 75 metre water frontage to Main River. The home is definitely one of a kind here on the Gold Coast and is nestled in one of the most private and secluded parts of our city. Yet, in today's term, it's still part of the heart of the city. Have a good look at the video whilst I'm sharing this fortnight's report and I'll give you a little bit more detail about the property at the end of my report. You know, it's just quite incredible how fast things are moving at present. Last week, we had the National Cabinet in Brisbane. The primary focus was on the housing market. I can assure you, as a board member of the Real Estate Institute of Australia, we have certainly been working with government and opposition parties to influence government policy. And I'm pleased to say it's showing some signs of working, at least in a number of key areas. Clearly, there's two aspects to this housing crisis, the rental market and the home purchase market. Now, the National Cabinet last week put a proposal forward for a huge increase in construction of new housing across the country. And whilst we certainly welcome that, we've also got to be realistic that it's going to take something like five years from now before we see a start to any meaningful impact into the housing crisis in that area. Meanwhile, there's going to be an additional one and a half million people that are going to be migrating to the country in those five years. So, What's missing right now is how do we address the immediate problem? The undersupply of rental properties and an undersupply of homes to buy in most markets around the country is the real problem. Well, it's in particular in the rental market that we have the biggest problem. So that if we have more rental properties, even people who can't find properties to buy could indeed rent. But the reality of the rental market is that across the country, the supply of rental properties has actually been dropping and they've dropped by some 15% from where it was pre-pandemic. That's caused by some investors selling their properties because of the usual factors of uh, some people passing away, divorces, financial pressures, and so on. But a lot of the problem has actually been caused by very few new investors entering the market. There's been a lot of talk in the marketplace that scared investors away. Lots more onerous state legislation, talks of rising land tax, and more recently, talks of a rental freeze for two years. So it was pleasing to see that the National Cabinet, uh, both at a federal level and at a state government level, have ruled out any rental caps. They agreed to a limit on one in rent increase a year, but not by any fixed amount. So it's certainly not going to be an issue in that area now. Who knows what would have happened had the rental freeze been put in place because there would have been a huge exodus of landlords out of the rental market. It's really pleasing to see the work that the Real Estate Institute of Australia has done to get that sensible outcome. But what needs to be happening right now is to incentivise investors to buy investment properties. There's certainly some great recommendations around on that front and we'll continue to present to government those recommendations. There are in fact incentives that could be put in place right now that would result in a significant jump in rental housing within months, but it's probably overly optimistic to think that's going to happen. And of course, build to rent plays a significant role in supplying a lot more housing in the right places uh, at the right rental amounts. So the good news on the current rental supply uh, is that it's not actually going to be de detrimentally affected by the rental freeze. Thank heavens for that. Even Victoria has reversed what they proposed as a rent freeze. Now, the other pleasing factor is that we're starting to see a little more settling in the rental market. Vacancy rates around the company, country are just starting to rise a little bit. Rental increases are now starting to ease back, mainly as a result of affordability issues. And that's preventing many people from simply paying the higher rents that were sought. I think many people forget that landlords also are put in difficult positions, with them also facing higher costs per annum, whether it's in local government rates, insurance premiums, body corporate levies, land taxes, 
and now the impost from state government's new legislations insisting certain improvements be made to properties. As the largest rent roll on the Gold Coast, we know the great majority of landlords are good people. Some have actually not put their rents up at all in the past two years, and others with very modest increases. I can safely say 95% of all of our landlords have been extremely caring throughout this rental crisis period. So let's hope a little bit more common sense filters through and the governments will embrace the further recommendations that we have presented to ease this housing crisis. Well, what did you think of 13 to 15 Burnside Court, Ashmore? It's simply amazing, isn't it? One of the largest residential land holdings on Main River with the incredible 75 metre frontage. The home has recently been completely modernised and retaining all of the amazing features, such as the high ceilings, the panelled walls, the magnificent timber flooring, Art Deco style windows, and lots more. It has an incredible national award-winning kitchen with high-end integrated appliances and generous and opulent bedrooms, media rooms, and the list goes on, even a tremendous wine cellar. Outside, as you can see, breathtaking here, this big 12.5 metre swimming pool, and the fabulous entertaining areas both at the front and the rear of the home. I just can't do it justice verbally. So come along, do yourself a favour, have a good look at the property. Details on screen now of our marketing agent, Jackson Paradise, and he can let you know the open home times or can arrange a private inspection to suit you. Do yourself a favour, do come along and have a look. Now, with my next report letter, I truly have so much diverse information to share with you. And I'll do that in very short point form. As I said at the opening, there's just so much going on at present that anyone with an interest in the Gold Coast needs to be aware of all of those changes. So looking forward to seeing so many of you at our ball at the 2nd of September. We're still getting people reaching out wanting to know if it's too late to book a table, and the answer is no, it's not. And others simply asking, could there come as a two, some more a four, some and the answer is yes. So reach out now to Selena Carson, our event coordinator, details on screen, as we're getting very, very close to the deadline. Our ball has always reminded us how lucky most of us are. These young children have this dreaded and ultimately terminal disease muscular dystrophy. At the time they should be enjoying their life to the fullest, they're confined to beds as they live through the final years of their life. Even though many of us are facing more challenging economic conditions at present, these kids need our support because they're actually facing the end of their life. And we can help by providing essential equipment and comfort and putting money into research to find a cure for this disease. If you can't make it to the event and you're on the night and you want to make a donation, again, reach out to Selena Carson. See you again in a fortnight's time. Thanks for your time today.